So our motivation with this work was to separate the two functions of a solar cell. So all solar cells have to do two things. They have to absorb light coming in and they have to generate charge. And in almost all devices, those two functions are performed by the same material, the so-called semiconductor. So a silicon solar cell, for example, uses silicon to absorb the light and also generate the charge. What we wanted to do was to separate those two functions into different materials because using something like silicon to absorb a lot of light is not a very efficient way to use what's a very, very good and often fairly expensive electronic material. So what we tried to do in this work is to keep using materials like silicon to generate the charge but to use much, much less of them and use something different, something that's a lot less expensive to do the optical function. So we use uh, organic dyes or paints to collect the light gather the, the radiation and focus it on uh, solar cells, but much smaller amounts of solar cells. What we've done in this work is we've, we've built a solar concentrator that doesn't need to track the sun. It's a flat piece of glass that has dye on top of it. The light comes in, it hits the dye, it's absorbed by the dye, and then the dye re-emits that light at a longer wavelength. But because it's re-emitting the light from inside this piece of glass, essentially, the light is trapped in the glass and is guided to the edges of the glass and is collected around the edges. So this gives us a very high so-called concentration factor, which means that essentially we, we have collect light over a very large area, but we only need a very small area of solar cells around the edges to generate the electricity. So what we've done is we've taken that idea and we've made it more efficient. Previously, the problems with these kinds of devices was that not enough photons got to the edges of the glass. They were absorbed before they got to the edge. And so we took an idea from lasers, uh, which is known as a four-level system, and we made the, the, the collector a lot more transparent to its own emitted light, which means much more of the photons get to the edges. And so we, we can make these things a lot bigger, we can make the concentration factors a lot big, bigger, and the whole thing gets a lot cheaper. So the way this works is, this is actually a regular piece of glass. It's completely colorless, but we have a, a thin film of dye on top of it. And the light comes in and it strikes the dye. So I have a little lamp here that's doing the same thing. Comes in and strikes the dye and the dye emits light. And that light is trapped in the piece of glass and comes out to the edge. And so you should be able to notice that the edges are glowing very brightly. The advantage of this system is instead of having to cover this whole square with a solar cell, you only need to put solar cells at the edges. And that saves you an awful lot of uh, money. We think that the combination of a solar concentrator and a conventional solar cell will enable you to get twice as much power from the system, which means a couple of things. One, you could just use twice as much power, and the other thing is you could use half as much area on your roof. For example, if you uh, had a solar cell system on your roof, you wouldn't have, to be, wouldn't have to be as big as it was before. So we think these are going to be fairly inexpensive to make. The, the dye that you're looking at here, for example, is a very common car paint and it's extremely inexpensive. And with regard to manufacturing it, it should be fairly easy to make because it's very tolerant of defects. So unlike a regular solar cell where if there's a defect somewhere on the cell, you'll have a short circuit and you can have a lot of problems because of that. Here, if there's a few defects here, you're going to lose a little bit of light, but it won't crash the whole panel. So we think this can be made very inexpensively with low-cost coating processes. And it's very tolerant of defects. We've measured some preliminary measurements of the stability, and so far we've found that uh, the, the dyes that we've used so far are stable to about 8% loss over about three months in the sun. Now, that's not enough to be able to turn it into a commercial product at the moment, but it shows a lot of promise that we will be able to get these systems stable in sunshine for periods of 20 to 30 years. This work will be reported in the July 11 issue of Science.